Hello, the real Tom Tom uh, here, and welcome to this new F1 2016 uh, video of me trying to set my levels. Uh, basically, trying to learn the game, trying to get better. You heard me talk about in a previous video about sort of basically trying it with no assists and being absolutely terrible at it. So what I've done is this is a quick race um, with the Williams, and what I decided to do is basically turn all the assists on so it's got traction control it's I think automatically doing my gears it's got sort of a low level of helping to brake it's not completely terrible it's got the racing line but it, it does still have sort of low level helping to brake so although I'm choosing my braking and it's not basically stopping me automatically it's not really letting me overshoot corners so it's more just about me getting a reasonable racing line and driving reasonably well and, and setting an average time on this game so what I did um, was decide to give it a go uh, as a quick race so there we go this is me as Felipe Massa uh, putting a, a P1 time up and I think I'm about three seconds it'll come up in a minute but I'm about three seconds quicker um, yeah 3.7 seconds quicker than Nico Rosberg in second place it's time to leave for now but we'll be back tomorrow when the Grand Prix itself gets so with all the assists on, I was doing much, much better than I had been previously. So it meant that at, at a worst case, oh, and the AI is set to easy. So the AI for this was the, the easiest one that it could be. So I decided what I would do is do the race and see how that sits. And again, I get a reasonable -ish sort of start. Breaking down in the corner, you you know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty good at getting the apex. You can't be as aggressive out of the corner as uh, you may be without the assists on. But again, with the, the line I'm able to take with the, the driving style and for this 5 lap race, what I'm able to do is cruise at home and win without any single problem going on. Though, you know, much better than I had been. What's quite nice on this sort of lap one is because obviously you do a qualifying, it's it's got your tyre wear down already like it would be in kind of a full race, even though it's only a five lap one. So you're starting on semi pre-worn tyres. So again, they don't run out by the end of this by any stretch of the imagination, but they, they don't start from like one, two percent. They have been used and, and take that into account. So I'm driving Bahrain reasonably well, uh, sort of. And as you can see on the little sort of left hand mini map, you can see already how far ahead I am of Rosberg and Raikkonen. Um, it should give me a split time in just a moment uh, up the hill. And again, I'm guessing that's possibly sort of four seconds quicker than them. Oh, no, not even that much. Only one, oh dear, two seconds there. That split was two seconds. I'm two seconds to, to second place and about three to third. So I'm pulling away quite nicely, doing reasonably well on this race. It was fun to drive, I'm not going to lie, I enjoyed it, I love this game, I think it is, it, I mean it's spectacular to look at anyway, I mean, while we're driving with the Williams, what I noticed, because it's obviously in their car this year, is their sort of gear screen, you know, their split times on their, uh, are sort of hard built into the sort of the monocoque cockpit, and the steering wheel is, is, is a lot smaller, kind of a, a racier wheel, whereas you look at some of the other people, and that kind of whole gear system is built into the whole wheel, and it's, it's sort of a massive clunky thing. Now, again, having never driven an actual F1 car, I couldn't tell you which is easier. But, you know, even aesthetically, I, I quite like the Williams setup there. I think I quite like that. The downside of it, however, is there, where you're turning sort of full lock to the left or right, you're blocking what gear you're in. Now, most F1 drivers will not need to know what gear they're They will know all that. They'll know what gear they're in. That's why they're professional F1 drivers. But for someone beginning, actually, the Williams could be quite of a, a sort of problematic. You're not quite sure what gear you're in. Again, I know in this view, you do have... Uh, at the right hand bottom screen there you can still see your gears your communications your revs and all that as well again like me so i do occasionally like driving in the cockpit i i, I know this is a, a view that most sort of uh, sort of youtube uh, people use is, is the above the head cam i do quite like being in the car i quite like that feeling i mentioned that before and that then when you're driving the williams for instance you do lose um some of that being able to see what gear you're in uh, so I just saw there I, I purpled this sector so I am now really pushing ahead uh, on sort of lap two here of, of this race uh, to everyone else so we'll get in a second the next split so I was when we last looked about two seconds ahead of Rosberg 
Um, so there it was, six. He'll be coming over the line in just a moment. Doesn't update that, so I'm currently there six seconds ahead of Rosberg at that split. It'll give me give us another one in a second, and I did a 138, which was a reasonable time. Not quite sure what the actual lap time is. I can't stop it now. Um, but yeah, now on lap three, and again, it's... If you like this sort of thing, in as much as when you're playing the game, you're out in front, you're winning, you're driving, you can make a mistake now, and you won't get overtaken. Pretty much, you could, right? You, can, you haven't got enough time for a full pit stop. But again, you, especially on somewhere like Bahrain, you run into the sand, you run off track ever so slightly, especially sort of at this uh, hairpin uh, corner. You're able to get back on track. You'll have lost your major kind of lead. Ahead, ahead of the, the rest of the field but you'll still be able to, to kind of securely win the race which is what I'm doing here very little uh, interaction with any AI drivers again all, a, 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 a point 0.3 better split but starting to go off the track a little bit and a bit weavy 9 seconds now ahead of Raikkonen who's obviously taken over on Rosberg Tire wear is not too bad, still at 28 to 22 percent. So I don't know whether I don't remember exactly how I set this up. So I don't know whether like tire wear is on sort of full or normal or whatever. So it's probably on a restricted level of of of, um, of that. So it's it's not going to wear out the tires as much because it is on the easy AI. It's on sort of all the assists. Tire wear is probably not on full. Um, that was a bad corner. That's going to really hamper getting a, a half decent lap time this time round. At least you think it would. So four or five, almost uh, at this complete bit. So what? After this one, um, after this race, what I did was went back and have done um, just the qualifying. So I didn't bother with the race. I just qualified with full assists on, but against different levels of AI to sort of see where if I do, like I say, a championship with say Williams or some McLaren where am I going to need the AI to be to be competitive to enjoy kind of racing and not just be out in front every race whatever car I mean I could probably do it in the manner I haven't tried that's maybe another video to try is could I do a quick race in the manner and still get uh, sort of top top billing as it were win the race with a manner on easy chances are I'd say I probably could depending on how bad mana is in this uh, particular iteration of the game and how much uh, it pushes to the other teams. But I think I, with most teams and people like myself who maybe know the principles of, of the racing line, who, who've played these games for a good few years, who so know the track, so I'm not kind of learning from a very basic level. But what it does mean is I'm not as good as, like I said, the people who are doing Ultimate AI with no assists and still absolutely sort of killing the field. So even with that terrible, terrible start, uh, where I really clipped the this first corner, I was by the second sort of a two or well, point two of a second um, better than I had been on the previous lap. I pur purpled the, the the lap again, so it's a one thirty eight two uh, for this particular one. Now we're getting onto the last lap. Um, I was I've been able to put my fuel mix up, if you can see that at the bottom right, because uh, I still had 1.38 of a lap now uh, remaining, so I've got plenty of in, in there to really push to get, a, again, the fastest lap of the race. Not that it won't not be me getting the fastest lap of the race on easy, but, you know, see if I can outdo myself. Sometimes I find that actually putting it into a rich mix and having that bit more speed, if you're like me and not the best driver but reasonable, you, you start missing your braking points, you have to brake slightly earlier, even though you're going faster in, in a section you'll, you'll need to brake earlier or, or change your braking style or, and, and that sometimes actually the rich mix where you might want to go faster is not actually me driving faster. Sometimes if I put it on a lower mix I'll get a reasonable lap time because almost have more thinking time between bits. So 1.4 second split for uh, the second section of the track, 17 seconds ahead of Rosberg. Uh, so really, really, really easy to win this for me. Getting up to the last corner and sort of break down, hit the apex, pull it out. Without the track, with the traction control on and, and that kind of stuff, actually that's really easy to get kind of out of those corners. You're able to do it and just and push, push, push. 
Now there's the uh, the inbuilt commentary. They sort of talk about the driver of the race in a second. I'll stop talking for that because I found it actually quite funny. Um, the Anthony Davidson uh, a bit over the top it was quite funny. And so there's my Felipe Massey race winner on easy uh, through the Bahrain nighttime race. There's Jensen down in 10th. He must be my rival for this race for whatever reason they decided. They've done a reasonable job with the face modeling of people, but as I think with, with lots of these things, where it's kind of a, a real person rather than maybe just an, uh, kind of a, a created face, there's something a little disturbing about them. And that's not against Codemasters. I think it's just the way things uh, kind of get built with kind of digital creations of, of, of a real face. It's, it's kind of like with Toy Story. You know, Woody's face, Buzz's face, and all that look fantastic and phenomenal. Oh, here we go. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Oh, maybe Marcus Ericsson? Yes, yes, I think I'll commit to that one. Marcus Ericsson, fine job, very consistent. Well, what a weekend that has been. Please there you go. Uh, maybe Marcus Ericsson. I just found it quite funny. Marcus Ericsson finishing down in 17th place. So here we go again. Uh, this is uh, qualifying with the Williams uh, with hard difficulty this time. I missed that medium. I went from easy. I didn't bother with medium. I went straight to hard. So at the moment, I'm still uh, currently in a pole position for this sort of quick lap. And you can see the little grey dot just behind me. So uh, hard level, I'm kind of just about mirroring where the, sort of the Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg times would be for this particular set. So doing reasonably well. Purple in the sector. 29 seconds for the first sector. Straight down here. And again, all the assists are on, except for it being low brake assistance rather than full brake assistance. I don't attack that corner as uh, as hard as maybe I could do. I think I need to. That's one of those corners on in in F1 that I just can never quite nail right. Some people can sort of get bits really really well done. And again, arguably, I'm not nailing any of these corners. But that one I find really hard because of you're coming from a very fast bit into a kind of an offset uh, sort of hairpin, real sort of sharp corner. And I just can't quite get it right. But the rest of the lap seemed to be doing reasonably well. Riding the curb a little bit, which again, if I had all the traction control off, I'd probably have spun by now by putting too much power down with my wheels on the red and white curb. That was a nice one, I think. I think I did reasonably well with that, that corner. Uh, into the start finish straight and I get a 135 and I qualify in first position um, but I'm much much closer to the rest of the field so again maybe hard is uh, so yeah he's oh, five hundredth of a second behind me so it's, it's very close and maybe on another track especially like Monaco I wouldn't be anywhere near as close so this is then um, on expert the next level up from hard uh, currently in first, but as we continue through this lap, he, uh, Lewis Hamilton that is, becomes much quicker than I do. However, I don't drop to the very back. I drop down to, uh, is it, 13th there. I pull it back up to, I think, qualify eventually in sort of between 8th and 9th. And I think that's probably a fairly reasonable and realistic level for me to learn with if I keep the assists on. Um... It will then depend in the race uh, how much sort of with the, with the assists on that because that's the next bit I haven't done is I haven't done this as a race with expert level because obviously, like they say in sort of in, a, in actual F1, there's it, the Saturday isn't where you get the points; it's when you do the race. And again, with all those people around me when I'm in the middle of a pack, maybe my driving won't be as good. Maybe I won't be able to sort of hit it. Maybe I'll have more accidents. Um, so that's going to be the next thing to test: is doing a, a sort of a quick race as a Williams on expert with all the assists on doing the qualifying, finishing sort of between the 7th and 10th position and then really pushing in the race to see if I can make those places up or whether I don't do so well. I don't know whether anyone else finds this as well but you'll notice here how, how badly I take those few corners. When you're in front 
I tend to drive better. You, uh, you, you're more consistent, you're more relaxed. When you're actually trying to get more out of the car, when you're really trying to sort of get the most out of a corner, when you're really pushing it, you can get it completely wrong. You sort of, sort of sm sm fall down and, and, and don't do so well. So there it is. There it is, 15th place. I wasn't even ninth. I That last bit really scuppered my um, my position of being sort of about ninth. I got to 15th in the end, which obviously isn't that great. But there you go. I'd say Expert is maybe a little bit more advanced than I am, but Hard is just on the edge. I think I'll do it on a few different tracks, try both levels and see how it goes for in the actual race. So I'll try and do some of those videos just on the quick race before I start my full campaign. But I do want to get into the campaign and do this full career mode bit, but I want to make sure that I'm playing at the level that I'm happy and enjoying playing uh, at. I, d I don't want it to be so easy that I'm just winning everything and it's not really point. there's no real point to it. I want to be challenged, but I also don't like the idea of having all the assists on, so it's trying to learn a bit better, maybe dropping down to medium or sticking it hard, but taking some more of the assists off. And it's just finding that balance for sort of the career mode to really get the most out of the game. But I think by the fact they've added sort of legendary and ultimate AIs and, and there's sort of a, a larger or a slower increment from, you know, where it would have been maybe once easy, medium and hard, where easy you could really win but medium you didn't stand a chance and then by hard it's just like you, it's, there's no point playing it. By having so many increments now, easy, medium, hard, expert, legend and ultimate, that's that's changed the, the banding, that's changed your grading for this and you can now really get something that matches your level you'll be able to sort of push somewhere you'll either set it like I did there sort of maybe hard and actually get a really nice bit to be able to win and always win if you want to that part side of the game if you always just want to win and just but not do it necessarily on necessarily on easy then you have expert and if you again find expert too easy you can keep moving up I won't be for yet I've got a long way to go uh, but hopefully I'll be able to document that hopefully I'll be able to get some more videos um, and and see how I do once I get to career but again I think there's a few more quick races a few more qualifyings to try I'll try and get those done um, over the next few weeks um, time being a factor obviously uh, but hopefully you enjoy it if you do uh, at the real Tom Tom on Twitter you follow me you can subscribe to the YouTube channel if you enjoy it please do I appreciate it um, and I just hope you enjoy the game like I do I, I will try and do some maybe some other videos outside of F1 as well but I've got less of a sort of capture device from the, the PlayStation and I'll try doing some screen capturing on the, on the PC for some indie games as well but if there's something you want to see if you want me to try something because of the level I am let me know shoot me a comment tweet me I will try and answer I'll try and get you that video I will try and show you how I do and yeah if anything else you like please just ask that's what I'm here for uh, the real TomTom Tom on Twitter have a lovely time playing F1 2016